Hey, what's up you guys? Marty Schwartz here with Marty Music again. Uh, so glad to have my friend Jamie Slays back. This time, this is Kirk Hammett style licks part one, meaning there's a part two coming. Uh, but real quick, make sure you check out Jamie Slays channel as well. It's all metal all the time, all that heavy stuff, and he's such a great player and teacher. So be sure to subscribe to his channel. Uh, take it away, Jamie. Hey everyone, it's Jamie from the Jamie Says YouTube channel, and I'm back again with Marty on his YouTube channel, showcasing some more metal techniques. Today we're gonna do some lead stuff in the style of Kirk Hammett from Metallica. So Kirk Hammett is the lead guitarist in Metallica ever since their first album, Kill Em All, and he has his own very distinctive style. This video is gonna feature five techniques that will help you nail those Kirk Hammett solos. We're gonna have tapping, scales, shredding, tremolo dive bombs, and big bends. So we're gonna start with tapping. So this is something he's most famous for in the solo for one. And it's something that if you like Eddie Van Halen or Steve Vai or obviously Metallica, you're gonna have heard it quite a lot. So with tapping, he pretty much has this one pattern where he will tap with his right hand and then pull off with his left hand, for example. <laughs> So what we're doing here is we're tapping first on the note that's the highest, then we're letting go and then we're pulling off as well. So in this case, we've got 12, 15, 19, tapping on the 19. He also does a brief tapping thing in the earlier solo for one, the one that starts like this. In that solo he taps on the 13, 17 and 22. He also does some tapping in a previous section, the one that sounds like this. So when he gets to the end, he taps on the 13, 17, and then we've got the 20. So the 20 is tapped and the 13 and 17 are pull-offs. One thing to be aware of is that when you pull off the note, you should have the previous note underneath already held down. So for example, if we're doing 13, 17 like this, when we pull off, we tap the note, like so. So when we pull off with our right hand, the note is waiting for us. Which, as you can hear, is quite difficult to get without it sounding like a flam or like a ghost note. You don't want it to be like this sometimes. Sometimes the note comes directly after. but sometimes it does do it the other way. Depends how the pattern is played, but work on it slowly, work your way up, and then you're sounding like Kirk Hammett in no time. On to the next technique, scales. So Kirk is famous for using the blues scale, the pentatonic scale, a bit of Phrygian, and in some places it's Dorian, uh, depending on what note placements there are. But we're not here to specifically talk about what scales he uses. We are also here to talk about how he uses them. So even if you take this scale, for example. I assume you can tell what song that is. If you can't, it's fade to black. So the scale in certain positions is like so. Because it comes out of another scale like this.
But what he does to play it differently is he plays it in a different position. So instead of the 10 up here, he plays a 15 on the lower string. But then he does this. A lot of the times that I learned scales through my career uh, were from playing Metallica songs. Same with Fate of Black. And that kind of thing. So when you then analyze it again, you go, oh my God, he's using a scale. But again, he may use pentatonic a lot, which is. Then he uses blues a lot. But again, it's how he uses them that makes it slightly different. So if you're a Metallica fan, which I assume you are, like I am, um, you'll notice he does use a lot of the same patterns, which make it easier to learn his solos. But then when you analyze them, you realize they are scales. So for example, in uh, Fade to Black, the solo is like this. This next bit is the bit I want to talk about. I find this quite difficult and I've struggled with this kind of pattern for a few years, pretty much 20 years. I haven't really nailed it properly yet, but this is something I was explaining. So in the blues type scale he plays, he does a lot of these, as Tim from Polyphia refers to them as, boomer bends, like so. I find them really difficult. Lots of people in bands like Eagles, Felina Skinnerd, uh, Metallica, and pretty much every band that have ever used those types of scales, use them quite a lot. These kind of... What you need to do is bend with your ring finger on the ninth fret, for example, in this position. Then we have our index barring across the seven and seven. Then we have our pinky or ring finger pulling off on the 10 on the B string. In this specific pattern of fade to black, it's played like so. Again, I still struggle with that pattern quite a lot, so you have to practice it kind of slowly and work your way up. There are other ways to play that kind of pattern, like so. That last one you may hear quite frequently. Marty, I'm sure I can play that one really well, but I struggle with those. Start on the high string, pull off, bend. Some people, if you have really thin strings, can do it just with their middle finger. But I need thinner strings in order to do that. So again, he may use specific scales, but it's how he uses them that takes the song to a different level. Another thing that he does with certain scales is like this. So what he's doing there is pull-offs, but he's using the top two strings of the scale and then running down towards the highest fret, like so. Or even like this one. Now we can nicely segue into the next technique, which is bends. So similar to what we were just saying then. Kirk is infamous for bends, big bends, little bends, vibrato, that kind of thing. He's most famous for, and what I really want to showcase are big bends, like these ones. The way to do those really well and not hurt your fingers too much is Anytime you're bending on a thin string, so G, B, or E, you bend toward yourself. Anytime you're bending on E, A, or D, you bend away from yourself. So if I was bending in this string, you kind of move towards the floor. If I'm bending the next string, the G, I bend towards me. Then you may notice that I'm using more than one finger. Those are called reinforced bends. So for example, if you're bending on the ninth fret on the G string, 
put your ninth fret finger is the ring finger, the eighth fret finger is the middle, and the seventh is the index, like so. Then we bend towards ourselves, give it a bit of vibrato and, and rock the guitar as well, don't be afraid to actually physically move it. But as you'll notice there, it makes me seem like a hypocrite, but if you're bending big bends like this, you will have your thumb over the top bend towards you. The thumb over the top helps mute some of these strings, but it also gives you a bit more grip and stability. But then if you're doing vibrato, you might rock away from yourself like so. And with vibrato, you want to make sure that you use kind of the side of your finger and rock it side to side. You don't want to bend it like this. Obviously, if it's stylized, that's okay, but a rule of thumb or finger is you rock it side to side to get a more smooth vibrato. Rather than like this. You want to do it like this. So again, in solos like Creeping Death or Fade to Black, we do a lot of bending up on the 22nd or 24th fret. That kind of thing. So again, three fingers or four fingers if you can, but three fingers is the easiest way. Big bends, little bends vibrato, focus on the bends, focus on slowly bending up to the right pitch, for example, the final tip. If you're bending a unison bend, which is like this, seven and 10. What you're listening out for from the 10 bend is you actually wanna bend up to the pitch of the seven. So if we have this note, you want the 10th fret on the B to bend to be the same pitch as the seven. Like so. As you hurt them, you have to mute the fingers as well, because otherwise you get this sound. Like you kind of rub against the other fingers. I kept that in. We're going to keep that in because we want to show you how to tame those strings. You do so by putting your thumb over the top or slowly bending rather than grabbing the other string. So again, if we're bending the 7 to the 10, or the 10 to 7 even, then you want to make sure the pitch is the same. You can sort of hear it sort of like when you tune a string and the notes will kind of warble and then the closer they get to each other, the warbling will stop and get closer and they'll be more in tune with each other, like so. Like that. But if you have it... As you notice, the closer I got to the note, you'd hear it go... And it kind of dies out a little bit. You want to hear that? Same with 12 and 15. on the 9 and 7 on the string below. So that's bending. On to the next one. All right, thanks, Jamie, for that awesome lesson, you guys. Also, if you uh, would like to see more metal style lessons from Jamie, let me know in the comments below. Also, don't forget, Jamie Slays has his own YouTube channel for you to check out, so check the link down there as well. Thanks again, Jamie Slays. Thank you, all of you, for watching and supporting Marty Music. Hope to see you again.